Bureau of Investigation until President Trump relieved him of that role last year. Uh, that firing has reportedly led to the president himself coming under legal scrutiny for potential obstruction of justice. Uh, now, as uh, me and the whole staff here were preparing for this interview tonight with Mr. Comey, some news broke about Mr. Comey. Um, you will remember that he was fired last May, May 9th. The following day, on May 10th, President Trump, surprise, hosted two Russian government officials in the Oval Office where he told them, quote, I just fired the head of the FBI. He was crazy, a real nut job. I faced great pressure because of Russia. That's taken off. That was May 10th, the day after the president fired Mr. Comey. The following day, May 11th, President Trump told NBC's Lester Holt that what he had had foremost in his mind when he decided to fire Mr. Comey was the Russia investigation. Now, in terms of criminal law, if the president fired the FBI director because it was a Tuesday or because he decided he just likes a lot of turnover in national security jobs or just because James Comey rubbed him the wrong way for no meaningful reason, that would basically be fine. Legally, the president can fire presidential appointees without anybody telling him that he can't. If, however, the president fired Mr. Comey, because of the Russia investigation, because he wanted to influence an ongoing FBI investi investigation into him and his campaign that Comey was overseeing as FBI director, well, that might be obstruction of justice. Criminal liability here hinges on intent, evidence of the president's intent in that firing. That's everything. So the ninth Comey is fired, the 10th the president tells Russian officials that firing him will take off great pressure because of Russia. The 11th he tells NBC News he's thinking about the Russia investigation when he fires the man. All potentially evidence of intent. Enough to sink the president on that? Dunno. Uh, but then just a few days later, exactly one week after Mr. Comey was fired, we learned on May 16th from this New York Times report that Mr. Comey had written several memos, contemporaneous memos, documenting his interactions with the president, interactions that led up to him being fired. Mr. Comey had given at least one of those memos to a friend who shared it with the Times. It was a memo about a now very famous interaction in the Oval Office in which Mr. Comey claims President Trump asked him to drop the Russia investigation into his national security advisor, Mike Flynn. The Times reported, quote, Mr. Comey also created similar memos, including some that are classified, about every phone call and meeting he had with the president. So the Times reported the existence of those memos um, on a Tuesday, one week after Comey was fired. Later that same day, the FBI got the first request from a congressional Republican to hand those memos over to Congress. Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz was the chair of the House Oversight Committee then. He has since left for a gig at Fox News. Uh, but Congressman Chaffetz wrote to the FBI that same day the memos were first reported, and he insisted that the Bureau hand over, quote, all memoranda, notes, summaries, and recordings referring or relating to any communications between Comey and the president which created this very interesting question. Would the FBI hand those over? Does the FBI even have the option to hand those over if those memos are going to end up being evidence in a live FBI criminal investigation? Well, the very next day, the day after the existence of those memos was revealed and Congress demanded to see them, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein appointed Robert Mueller to be a special counsel to take over the Russia investigation. And if Comey's firing was directly connected to the Russia investigation, which Trump himself had said it was, then Comey's firing would presumably fall under the remit of the special counsel's active open investigation. And so the FBI said no. The FBI told Congress, no, we cannot turn over James Comey's memos to you because they are evidence in an ongoing investigation. And we don't turn over evidence in an ongoing investigation to anyone. That standoff between the FBI and congressional Republicans over Mr. Comey's memos, it's been going on ever since, ever since May of last year. Republicans in Congress demanded that the FBI handed over the memos. Uh, the, they demanded that Rod Rosenstein make the FBI turn them over. Rod Rosenstein said no. That tracks with longstanding precedent at the Justice Department. Evidence in ongoing criminal investigations is closely guarded. In this case in particular, given what we've seen over the last year or so, there was, in addition, for being real here, 
every reason to believe that if those memos or any other evidence was turned over to congressional Republicans, it would probably be leaked, perhaps selectively, to the media, and it seemed safe to guess that any such material would also be shared with the president and his legal team, while the president, or at least his campaign, is the subject of the special counsel's ongoing investigation. And reportedly, that includes an investigation of whether the, co the firing of Mr. Comey is evidence of obstruction of justice. So th that is where things stood until right now, uh, until tonight. Um, after days of reporting that Republicans in Congress were putting incredible pressure on Rod Rosenstein to produce documents, threatening to hold him in contempt of Congress, threatening to impeach him, uh, tonight the Justice Department has handed over to Congress Mr. Comey's memos about his interactions with the president. Uh, memos that presumably are still... Very much looking forward to asking him about that and everything else under the sun. James Comey has been a lifelong public servant and law enforcement professional. He served as a federal prosecutor in the Eastern District of Virginia and in the Southern District of New York, where he rose to become the U.S. Attorney in the Southern District. He then became Deputy Attorney General of the United States and then Director of the FBI. At this point, he expected to be about halfway through the normal 10-year term for an FBI director, but President Trump fired him in May. Mr. Comey has now written a book about his time in public life and his views of ethical leadership. It is a book that is driving abs everybody absolutely crazy up to and including the president. It's called A Higher Loyalty, Truth, Lies, and Leadership. Director Comey, it's really nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. It is here. great to meet you. Great to be here. Um, I, thank you for timing this whole thing so I, that the memos <laughs> came out right before you sat down. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, and I haven't actually had a chance to read exactly um, what they have released. I can tell you how they start. What follows are notes I typed in the vehicle immediately upon exiting Trump Tower on 1617, although I wrote this in less than five minutes after the meeting and have tried to use actual words spoken, including quoting directly in some places. I have not used quotation marks throughout because my purpose was to capture the substance of what was said. I'm not sure of the proper classification here, so have chosen secret. Please let me know if it should be higher or lower than that. You recognize those as your words? I do. Um, why did... You, you explained to Congress that you didn't write memos like this after other interactions with other presidents. What trained you or told you or made you believe that you should write a memo like this after interactions with President Trump? Well, the first meeting in particular, I was concerned that I needed a record to show the other intelligence agency chiefs who had been with me but didn't stay behind for the second private meeting. And I also was worried that I was meeting alone with the president to talk about things that were relating to him and to the FBI's core responsibilities. And given the nature of the person, as I understood the president-elect, uh, he might not tell the truth about those if it ever became an issue. And so I needed a written record. And is this the sort of thing that um, FBI officials and even FBI special agents and people throughout the Bureau um, do as a matter of course? Is there sort of a template for this kind of thing? Do you train one another that this is the way to approach uh, your, your role as a potential witness in an important interaction? These are different than what agents would normally do. Agents would normally prepare a, what's called a 302 and make it an official record. This was an email to my team who hadn't been there, just telling them what went on. The other memos I wrote were more sort of aids from my own memory, mm -hmm. but none of them were done in sort of the way an FBI agent would do. I'm not an FBI agent. I wasn't. I was the director. You have shared a, a lot of your details in congressional testimony in particular and now uh, in the book, which I buried under my notes here. Um, about your meetings and interactions with President Trump. And so we know some of what is in these memos. Is, is Congress, is the public going to learn substantially new information and important new information about your interactions with the president? Or do you feel like you conveyed the most important stuff to Congress? I don't know because I don't, I haven't had access to my memos in quite a while. So I don't know whether there's significant stuff that's in there that I wasn't able to tell in the book. I don't think so, okay. but I haven't read them myself. And so I'm okay with transparency. I, I just assume the Department of Justice went through the steps to make sure that it wasn't jeopardizing an ongoing investigation. Well, to, I mean, to that point, I mean, you say in the book that you don't know if the president's requests to you about the Russia investigation um, and your firing constituted obstruction of justice. Um, you said a prosecutor would need to review all the evidence of the president's intent behind those actions in order to do that. Do you think these memos 
are part of the evidence that a prosecutor, Robert Mueller or somebody else, should be considering when determining the president's intent? Yes, in, in this way. I'm sure the special counsel is considering my recollection of those events, which are reflected in these memos. But it's my recollection that is the evidence that would be used if there was ever a proceeding. These would be to show that I wrote it down at the time, sort of to bolster the credibility of my recollection. Can it, uh, as a general matter, impede an ongoing investigation to have central evidence, important evidence, made available to the public? Um, and that, of course, includes being shown to the person who may be the subject of investigation. Could, in general, it could. Yeah. It would depend upon the circumstances of the case and the material. And in this case, do you worry that that's a possibility? I don't know because I haven't gone through them in detail. I think all the significant parts are also in my book, which the FBI reviewed and approved as part of the pre-publication review. So I really can't say here. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.